here we are still in the same folder. We're gonna do one more section. We're gonna say crazy buttons and we'll add this here. Every time we hover over this button, it's gonna move all around the page so that we can actually click it. And this is purely, probably not really practical in a real world scenario, but it's a fun example to use. A class button is info and we'll say is crazy. And this will be the class that we attach ourselves to. Catch me if you can. Okay. Now, the one thing we need to do here is make sure that we style this correctly. So we'll say style is, is crazy button. And we'll say position is absolute. And let's set a transition on it. 0 0.3 seconds is all. So that when we change out the top and bottom, it'll move around smoothly. Now our method here, we're going to have this button. And as we hover over it, we're going to use the mouse enter event. We're going to change the styles on it so that the position top and position left are randomly generated. And to demonstrate that, let's go over here. We'll inspect. We have our button and we'll say top. Uh, let's do a random number. Let's do 200 pixels. And left is, let's say, 800 pixels. And that's how we're going to generate our random button movement. We're going to have a top, random, left, random, and that will be done in view. So we're going to do two things. We're going to bind to a style here. So we're going to say style is equal to something. And then we're also going to listen for that mouse enter event. And then we're going to do something on that. And let's break this out. This is something I like to do for our view classes. We are doing it multi-line and now it's a little bit more readable colon style because we know we're binding data into it and at mouse enter because we know we're listening for that event. Let's do the object way. We're gonna say button offsets. And then down here in our data, we'll create a button offsets object. Top is null and left is null. So right now, nothing is set for top and left, and that works out just fine. And then on mouse enter, we're going to say move button. So as we hover over it, we'll move this button around. So we'll go down here. We'll say move button function. And let's get the event out of there. And console.log e, so we can see what's going on. We'll come over here, open up the console, hover and we get a mouse event, and you can see all the different things about this event that are happening. All right, very good. So if we did e.target, save, you would actually get the button itself. And this is the target of the event. So that's good to know. What we'll do, we're gonna delete all that. We don't need that anymore. We will basically say this.button offsets is equal to it. Oh, a new object. And we're going to reassign those top and left to be, and we'll use an ES6 template string, math.random. And that will give us a number between 0 and 1. And we'll multiply that by the window.inner height. Now, basically, and we'll add pixels to that. Basically, what that means is we're going to get math.random, which is 0 to 1. And then the window height right here, let's see what it is, window.inner height. 442, which is what this viewport shows. We're going to multiply 442 by math.random. Let's say math.random, and that's 0 0.5. So that would be around 221. So the button would be offset by 221 off the top. And that's how we'll just get a random number. And if you're wondering a little bit about this window.inner height, math.random, definitely check out the Getting Started with JavaScript course. We go over a lot of that. So here we have our top and we'll do the same for left but instead of the height we'll do the width okay that should be everything as soon as this button offsets uh, gets updated our template up here gets updated and then our button should automatically move because our css has transition 0 0.3 seconds ease and that will make it a smooth transition so if we open this up hover it moves okay that first one didn't get the transition though, and I think that's because our top left was just null. Oh, and it went off the page. <laughs> but that's a good example of how we can do that. So we'll save, refresh, and our button moves around like it should. Simple example, but it kind of goes to show how 
you can listen for an event, change out some variables down here, and immediately view will update the template so that all those things take place.